Hi everyone and welcome to part 2 of my conversion of Dragon's M7 Priest in 135th scale uh, into one used by the Canadians on D-Day. As you can see from the short introductory video, um, it's been all about getting the components ready, uh, adding detail and improving the parts. Um, so if you'd like to see how I got on, uh, then uh, feel free to make yourself a brew, pull up a chair and let's do some modelling. So first of all was the uh, gun section, um, very fiddly, the um, instructions weren't very good um, so it did take a lot of dry fitting but we got there in the end. Uh, the thing that did help is that the, the fit is absolutely beautiful and lots of lovely detail. As you can see uh, I added a few PE parts uh, from the Voyager set. Now the Voyager set uh, is beautiful, it's uh, gone together really well, I've had absolutely no issues with it whatsoever and uh, it was a matter of doing two halves of the uh, gun section and then putting those together and then adding all the peripherals around the side. Now the uh, British like to put some rope around the uh, top part of the bow because uh, obviously they felt that this was a weak section uh, susceptible to shrapnel and, and, and other types of damage and so they wrapped a, a piece of rope around it. Now I uh, reinvented that by putting on uh, some nylon thread and that was super glued in place um, and I'm looking forward to seeing that once it's painted up. Now I use nylon thread because I find that cotton thread uh, once painted does go all furry whereas the nylon thread doesn't so uh, it might be worth using that for the future if you use cotton. So with the gun placement in place um, it was a matter of just checking to make sure the shields fitted on fine with the front glacius and I was really pleased with how that went. Now as you can see I've put mine at an angle uh, because of the uh, photo that I'm uh, doing however for whatever reason that meant that the uh, rear spring connector was too short so I had to make a new one and get that fitted in place so just bear that in mind if you do change things around. Uh, as far as the lower internal hull goes it was a matter of getting that all cleaned out um, I wanted to add as much detail as I possibly could for, from the research photos as you can see there were some uh, pretty severe injector marks in there and, um, now I always used um, other putties but this model I decided to use the perfect plastic putty which is fantastic for doing seams and small areas but it does struggle uh, with, with, with the larger stuff um, so I then put in the um, transmission section uh, along with the flooring just to check that it all fitted and with the seat as well and then it was a matter of getting down and doing some extra detailing. As far as the seat goes I just scraped out some folds and some creases uh, which will aid in the painting and then on the back I drilled out some air holes and also put in some uh, meng nuts as well just for added detail. Uh, the transmission uh, is very nicely detailed so very precious little had to be done just added a few conduits and wires there was a hose that went on that side but in all my references I never saw it so I took that off and then we have the crankshaft there as well so very pleased with uh, Dragon's detailing on this particular part of the model and then I made it uh, a fuel can holder um, I uh, reused uh, the uh, ammo holders uh, from the kit because uh, I'll be replacing those with PE ones um, and then I added on some square nuts and some round rivets and also some meng nuts just to add all the, the small detailing in around and there you can see the uh, fuel can holder um, and just added on a bit of plastic card and, and, and a little bracket there uh, from the spares drawer so that that would work out well. I'm also going to be putting in a couple of little mini art oil cans just for detailing. Um, I'll make them bright red so that they do stand out. Um, but as you can see from this photo, the viewer should just about be able to see them. Then it was a matter of putting in the bulkhead, um, adding um, some detailing around that. 
and as you can see that fitted in quite snugly with the uh, fuel can holder as well and there we go that will all fit in place um, and once painted up that should look quite nice there just about of ending on some meng nuts um, at a couple of uh, 0.8 mil uh, rivets there's a little battery pack to go on top of there yet which I still need to do uh, but very pleased with how that's turned out and that was done using the 0.25 mil plastic card and there it is all in place all rather snug um, a few of the nuts have fallen off uh, which was expected uh, but it's quite a tight compartment but uh, very pleased with how that's turned out and we turn to the front plates uh, on the internals as you can see there's a little bit of PE there to be added uh, for the flashlight holders and the water can holder um, as well as uh, added detail there for the um, boxes it was very small PE uh, but as with Voyager all bent and folded into place with no issues whatsoever and I was fortunate enough not to lose anything to the carpet monster as well as far as the configurations go there are lots of different places the flashlight holders can go etc so don't get too hung up on that uh, now I'm going to be putting in um, the series 19 radio set um, that's coming from Panzer still waiting for that to arrive um, and as you can see there, there's the telephone as well as the uh, radio aerial holders on these research photos and I just basically uh, drilled a couple of holes in in the front for the wires to go in and then just found a, a couple of little holders in the uh, spares drawer and adapted them accordingly there's some little 0.5 mil rivets on there as well so feeding the wires through I've no idea how, that, how that's all going to go together so I've left extra length then I made the little magazine rack again out of little bits of plastic card and off cuts and then that just added that last final bit of detail on the left hand side and we have some uh, 0.4 wires in there for the uh, conduits on, on the front lamps as well so really pleased with how that's all turned out I've cut and trimmed them at the front because you don't actually see those come through because they go straight from the light themselves on the right hand side a um, couple of little uh, drawers there replace the handles uh, with some 0.4 uh, wire as well as the conduits as well and just in, in improve the uh, ammo box um, well, not even an ammo box I think it's just a, a, a holder and that's what it looked like originally so as you can see it's, the difference is uh, a lot better uh, just a quick pro tip um, if you have some bent wire um, just stretch it out and uh, make it as flat as you possibly can um, and then all you need to do is uh, just get yourself uh, the, your metal uh, ruler and then uh, press hard and uh, straighten it out and then all of a sudden you've gone from uh, a wonky piece of wire and then you have a nice straight piece which you can make your, your handles out of so hopefully that will help I um, wanted to make some uh, 50 cal uh, ammo boxes uh, the easiest method was to uh, raid the spares drawer and as you can see here I've just taken the handles uh, off and replaced them with some PE ones out of the again out of the spares drawer and that little 50 cal box will, will, will uh, slip in there nicely and again it's just add, add, adding detail now the uh, ammo bins uh, again from Voyager beautiful went together lovely uh, really nicely detailed with, with some weld seams on the uh, brackets etc so very pleased with how they uh, went however uh, there ain't enough um, cartridge cases so uh, I'm actually going to ha have to make uh, quite a few of those because the research photos show that on D-Day these uh, priests were absolutely loaded to the brim with the a a ammunition now as you can see from this research photo um, the bin on the right hand side they've actually adapted and, and added a, a, another 8 in there so I uh, thought that was a nice bit of detailing um, so I've increased the uh, size of the ammo bin with a little bit of uh, photo etch uh, bent around a, a plastic base and you'll see in a moment how that's been added on now 
Um, I ran out of uh, styrene rod, so I've used a few few of the plastic ones uh, from the kit there. Uh, that will be covered over with the sheet anyway. Um, and then it's uh, there we go with the extension on. Um, I think once uh, all of those ammo uh, canisters are painted up, they'll fit rather snugly in there. And it was just a matter of using the, uh, a piece of tubing and then having uh, two mil discs uh, put at the end of each tube uh, to create the indentation and then 1.3 mil uh, discs uh, to, 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 to create the, the center part as well. Um, took a few days to do, uh, but uh, I was really pleased with how the detail came out and I'm looking forward to seeing that, how those come out once painted up. And there we have them all. So pl plenty of ammunition uh, going to be carried on this one. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, taking off some of the detailing um, using the uh, PE scrapes now with the um, Canadians they didn't have the carbine brackets on the side um, so all of those were scraped off and taken out and this is where I'm going to be putting the um, phone uh, and also the um, wireless sets so eventually the side will go on like so um, there will be the seat that will go just here uh, and then along the side next to it I'll be putting the, the radio set and the uh, phone. So I look forward to seeing all that go into place. Now, as far as the back panel goes um, I wasn't able to find any research photos sh um, showing it covered up so I've gone for the open type one. Uh, the instructions here Dragon got it a little bit wrong it's not D8 it's A8 but not a major problem and this is the the open back style that I've got so it was a matter of um, making that master switch um, box um, scratching it and to, to move the um, poles down down to the bottom which wasn't a major issue um, also I had to add a little bit of PE so it meant drilling out the uh, side there then getting a very sharp knife and then cutting through those holes and then once that is done it's just a matter of uh, sanding and um, trimming that down and then just uh, cleaning up the lines using some extra thin uh, cement and then adding the um, piece of PE onto the back and I've bent it here and there ju just to make it a little bit more realistic and then it's just a matter of cutting the top of the uh, guard off so that the uh, master switch box could fit in uh, just used odd little bits from the spares drawer very basic um, and then cut that all down to size so that it could fit in and also added on some uh, 0.5 mil rivets um, and a little piece of plastic coming out the side tubing and the tubing down the bottom as well and as you can see there's some Tamiya cable in there as far as the uh, sighting rods go just made those out of some uh, 0.8 mil um, rod as far as the clamps go I hate doing clamps I really do uh, these went together fairly well but there's such a pain um, but as you can see I've moved those down to the bottom as per the reference photos and with the uh, rods in place that all looks the part now so really pleased with how that's all turned out um, just a matter of updating some of the detailing filling in bits um, that were different where the master switch box is there should be a couple of poles there for cleaning out um, the bow so they will have to be put somewhere else but uh, all in all really pleased with, with, with how that detailing has turned out so at the stage now where we're going to be uh, scratch building the the side panels and uh, building all of that detailing up and then once that's done hopefully we can start putting some paint on the interior uh, but that's all to come in the uh, next video uh, so I'd just like to say thank you very much indeed for popping in and uh, having a look at uh, the progress on this build. Uh, a big thank you to all of my subscribers and your continued support of my work. And that just leaves me to say, happy modelling!